The library is very kind to let our group, ESOL, East Suburban Artist League, have a um, little area over here where we exhibit. Um, so every month a different artist will exhibit and mine happens to be up there. And these are all extra pieces that I brought along with me tonight. Um, so if you want to get up and walk over there, feel free to do so during it um, or afterwards. Um, good, so my talk is going to be about my exploration in color, mainly because I spent so many years just working in black and white. Um, and that's what I was always most comfortable with. But colors can just make you feel so wonderful. Um, so I began a um, color journey. So my, my talk is going to give you a little bit of background in me and how I got to where I am. Recording is on. <laughs> so sorry. That's okay. And, um, and my process and philosophy. So um, my color journey began when, after we moved here to Pittsburgh. We moved here in 2014, and um, I'll get to that later. But I do have a background in art. I was an art major in college. I have a degree in commercial design, which is graphic design. Um, and I worked as a graphic artist, which was before computers had anything to do with graphics. So it was all kind of a hands-on wax cutting and all kinds of stuff. Um, so I worked at a newspaper, a print shop. I did freelance work and um, also worked at an ad agency. Um, so when you are studying art, they, you have requirements so to, to take classes in drawing and painting and sculpture. And so you know about everything. And, um, and become familiar with it naturally so you can call in what your, um, what your focus would be. So I always love the drawing part. And drawing is fundamental. Everybody has to take drawing if you're an art major. And um, that has been one of my focuses over the, um, over the years is, is pencil drawing or graphite drawing. And, um, you know, when you do that, you, you, in college, you're doing from models and still lives and self-portraits and um, so I wanted to give you one of my self-portraits that I did back in college that's an oldie beauty that's me um, and uh, anyway I just loved being able to use the black and white and grays make form um, I have an eye for and I'm good at rendering and draftsmanship and perspective. I um, ended up having a business doing house portraits for realtors initially that they gave us gifts. And then um, that just continued on as we were raising a family. It was a great um, side job to have. Speak up. <laughs> um, and so I had that for several years, and then that kind of went on to, um, here's a picture of one that, that's one that I did so that, to, to have at a little festival so that I could um, get solicit more business. So that was one of my examples way back when. Um, I did keep my hands in graphics. Um, I taught myself for Photoshop and did some mailers. So now fast forward to 2014. We moved here to Pennsylvania um, for my husband's job, which he's right there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we came here, our kids had just graduated from college. They were on their own, and so we were in town. And I was trying to decide what I was going to do. And um, four wonderful women from my church um, invited me to East Suburban Artist League for inspiration and for opportunity. So I joined, and through that, um, I found Greensburg Art Center where I took classes. Um, and I signed up for, I decided to get out of my comfort zone, get away from the black and white. And I signed up for an oil painting class. I, 
bought all the supplies, got them all ready, headed over to the class, headed over driving to the class, hyperventilating the whole way because I was so nervous about um, whether I could do it or not. And I loved it and took more classes and then I discovered um, pastel, a pastel class at Pittsburgh Center for the Arts. Took that, made a great friend who um, we took more classes together and, um, and, and painted together as well. And um, this painting is one, this one had won, actually won a first place award in the Trove. Um, but this painting, we were going to go, I was going over to her house. She said, come on over, we'll paint an apple. And I got over there and she had this whole setup. I thought, oh my goodness. And that's what came out of it. And I, just, I really had fun doing it. It stretched me. Painting with others stretches you, I think. Um, then I discovered model sessions in Pittsburgh. And there are a lot of well-known Pittsburgh artists that go to these model sessions. Some are draped, some are not draped. Not the, not the artists, but the models. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, and so a lot of well-known Pittsburgh artists go to these to hone their skills and to, um, and to keep in practice. Um, so I did go to a few of those. I attended some workshops in color at McMurray Art League in the South Hills. Um, those were extremely helpful. This is one of the um, color studies that we did, which uh, you can see that some of the colors aren't real as far as what, uh, you know, they call local color, I guess. Um, but you can tell what it is, and it gives a feeling to a painting. So that was a wonderful practice and study in color. Um, so, oh, I didn't show my model. These are some of the, <laughs> when I went to the, um, some of the model sessions, these are just a few of the ones that I did because they'll do them very, you know, they may sit for only a few minutes, but others will sit for several hours. Yep. It's always great practice to do that. So some of the goals for me getting into the exploration of color were to not be so detailed. As you can saw in my um, portrait of the houses, that it's very detailed and, and was just tired of doing all that detail. I wanted to expand and I wanted to be a little more loose and bold and I want to be more confident with my brush strokes, uh, which I think that will come as I learn more and more about color mixing that goes along with because that's not an easy thing in mixing your colors. I also want to simplify but have enough hint of detail. So I, I discovered um, an artist, Doreen Curry, who, whose work is very loose and fresh and very colorful, and I just love her work. So I discovered that she was teaching a class at Greensburg Art Center, so I took it there as well. Um, and one of my, you know, in the, in the classes like that, you'll do um, still lives, you'll sometimes paint photographs or sometimes paint um, people. Um, and one of my still lifes is back there on the panels for East Suburban Artist Week. Um, and then uh, these are just a couple little um, still lifes, right? <laughs> tiny ones. My one back there is a big one. Um, and then sometimes, too, you'll, you'll um, paint from photographs. And uh, I usually like to paint from my own photographs, but um, in the class, they, the Dory will bring pictures and we'll reach through them, and I just thought, this next one. And that, it just, those little ducks just look like they're, like, gossiping about something, I guess. So this is titled Best Friends. Um, and it, uh, it also won an award. Um, 
um, in an online exhibit. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to talk louder <laughs> if I can. <laughs> in an online exhibit, um, where international entries were all over the world. Um, Again. So sorry. So this group of artists in this class paint together regularly, um, even when the class isn't in session. And it's just a, a wonderful camaraderie to have artists to paint together with. Um, you know, it you learn so much from the way they paint, and you learn so much from what they say because we have what you call critiques, which is not criticizing somebody's work. It's um, saying things that you like about it or and what can improve where they might be able to, you know, fix some perspective or something like that. And it's just really a wonderful um, mix. And they also keep you accountable because when you go to something like that, they want to see how you finished it so you have to bring it back. So you have to finish it. Which sometimes I'll just shove aside. That um, some of, some in that group also did do plein air painting, and that is painting in the open air, so painting outside. And so I decided to join them. That was the perfect thing for COVID because um, because you didn't have to wear your mask. You could be outside and you didn't have to worry about any of that. Um, so it was perfect for that. So I started going to a few of those and then um, that blossomed into a three day paint out um, where you have to do your paintings and um, finish 80% of it on site. One of my goals is to finish the whole thing on site but um, just to have to finish it 80%. Then you have a wet, wet paint sale at the end of it. So some of these up here, um, this one was from a couple of years ago. And yes, it was in the winter and I painted in the winter. <laughs> and this was from just recently, um, the paint out this past February. And it was snowing, it was like 20 to 22 degrees or something <laughs> out there painting that. So, so you know, it's just, Painting outside is, is stretches you also because it makes you work really fast. Uh, the light's always changing because the sun's always, you know, everything's always moving. And um, so you have to work fast and it's good practice too. And that's the way to make yourself freer. So um, another thing that I realized about painting especially when you're at a paint out like that, is that you're performing. You feel like you're performing because, okay, we've got this amount of time, you have to, you have to do something and somebody will look at it. So, that, so it was very well, kind of nerve wracking for me at first, but uh, some can come out well, some don't, and so oh, good. <laughs> So when I was reviewing, uh, when I was reviewing all of my art for this talk, um, I realized a few things. I think I like creatures, like um, animals, people, bugs. I really love to paint them. Um, well, I'm just fascinated by them anyway. Um, and, so when I choose, and well, I'll go a side note, when I choose um, an image that I'm going to paint, to me it has to evoke a feeling for me um, and something that's dear to me and um, sometimes tells a story. So I've done a lot of paintings of my family. This is my son when he was 10, our son when he was 10. Um, this is our daughter and son-in-law. And these are pictures that I've taken when, when we were different things. This is them when they were little in the mud. And I have um, 
painting of him of my husband back there walking on the Pacific coast. Our cat is back there as well. I don't know if you saw the little little cat picture. And that's our, our cat Dan who lived until he was on he was almost 21 and he was just he just would sit in my arms like that. So I had to paint that. Um, yeah, and so I, and I also just love the nature. Um, these are my beans. I absolutely love watching them on the back hill and on our flowers. And I'll spend hours just like making little videos. And then I found an app where I can press wherever I want a picture of that one spot. And then I can um, um, I'll do a painting of it. I just love that one. Call him the inspector. And uh, but they're, they're so fun. And I only have one of those left. All of those have sold. I think this is the only one left. Right there. And he's right there. Uh, but yeah, I just love these. Um, I also like fun things that are happening. Um, this is Henrietta, and Henrietta is actually, um, that's actually a, a pen that is, it's at a place that's something in the attic restaurant. Flowers in the attic, attic restaurant. I was there having um, having lunch at the patio with some friends, and Henrietta came and jumped up on the table while we were waiting for our food. I started eating her lunch, so I snapped her lunch. <laughs> and then I just, I mean, her head was all wiggly, but um, but I just I had to read that. And then there's this one, which is those are gorillas, and they're not chimpanzees. They are um, bonobos. And I took the took the image at um, the San Diego Zoo, and um, it wasn't a very good picture, but I just loved how they were looking like they were having a conversation. Just hanging out. And so this is actually called um, Lana and Callie Bonobo hanging out. <laughs> when I looked at when I looked on the website, I found matched the pictures. That one is Lana and that one is Callie. And it took me a while to figure it out, um, especially because Callie has moved to the Cincinnati Zoo because they don't like to interbreed them too much. But um, so I just, I just, that spoke to me, that painting. So on this journey of color, my background in black and white, um, it was beneficial because with a good black and white sketch, they call them thumbnail sketches or just black and white drawing. Um, that's where you build your color and that's where you get your um, composition. And composition is a word that artists use all the time. It's, uh, it's where you place your objects, how you, um, how you lights and darks so that the viewer what are they going to look at? How is it? How is it going to draw them into the painting? So the, the, that's something that's real. Um, that's really in the back of my mind. Um, in that, you know, I, I I I want to draw you into my painting. I want you to be able to look at it and look around it as well. And there's the color mixing, which has been the most fearful for me. Um, but it's a constant learning process. Some colors you can mix together, like one blue you can mix with one red, it will be muddy. Another blue you can mix with another red, and it will be beautiful purple. And it's interesting the way all this happens and, and um, learning what goes with what and what makes your eye pull into the paint. So, um, 
my next page. Oh, I think I just put in here some um, some other paintings that were just were of interest of mine. Uh, my husband and I love to um, hike, and this is how I hiked. We were at Bryce, Bryce, I believe, and it's just that's something that's dear to me. These are some here. You have um, see little ants. Spent hours watching the ants. On, on the peonies, and then a landscape, and then from a picture of a bird. And um, these are, are two house portraits that I did. <laughs> one of them's theirs, and, um, and the other one, this one is, belongs to friends in the front row, and the other one belongs. This is um, kind of going back to the plein air painting a little bit. That's this painting, finished one. But, you know, we set up out there. Uh, and you can see how you just see there. I left out the house and just kind of giving you an idea of what, what it's like outside. And this one, um, a friend of mine took a picture of me, plein air painting. And actually, the painting that I was doing is over there. It's the one that's called Chicken Poop. And it's got the little door. So you can see that in the finished piece. Oh, was that a painting? Or was that a picture? That was a picture of me. The painting's over there. Yeah. So, um, anyway, I was accepted into the Pittsburgh Society of Artists um, and also the Cranberry Artist Network. I regularly enter shows. I don't always get in them. That's called jurying. And um, it's not necessarily because you had something that's really awful. It's because the, um, the juror is looking for a show. And, and plus, there are other people who can be better than you. Um, and you can, I regularly uh, exhibit year round at the Latrobe Art Center. I always have something there. We change out every two months. So if you ever get a chance to go down there, there's some wonderful artwork in Latrobe. I have a website, bettytrail.com, if you want to see more of my work. Don't have Instagram, but I do some on Facebook, but not on. So, but I, I'm going to be getting to that stuff. So, um, finally, um, challenge for you. And that is whenever you're outside and you have a bunch of clouds all around, take a look at the clouds, see what colors you see. Not necessarily gray and white. You'll see blue, you'll see purple, you'll see yellow, you'll see orange, and especially at sunset, but really look at them and stretch yourself and see what you can do. It's um, really kind of a fun thing. Artists tend to see things a little bit uh, differently, and I find myself, now that I'm doing this color journey, I find myself looking, like I'll watch somebody who's speaking, and I'll say, what colors under your chin? Or, you know, <laughs> what colors am I going to? I don't look at their chin. I'm just <laughs> I wonder about the colors. <laughs> um, so, anyway, that's a challenge. And then another challenge is to go out on a gray day and, um, and see what colors you have. Because you'll be able to see some. And that concludes my presentation. And I am open to some questions. Yes. I'm looking at your paintings and I'm wondering what makes you sign some of them B trout, some Betty trout, and some just trout. <laughs> Do I have any for Betty trout? Um, I think my favorite. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> just curious. That one's not in paint. That one's that's that's why that one's Betty trout because I was using my signature on that. With the ones that have bee trout, is because it's a bigger painting, I can fit it on there well. 
but trout is oftentimes on a smaller Great question. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No, actually, when we do the plein air paint outs, um, they ask us to put dryer in our paint so that they will dry a little bit. They won't dry fully, but they'll dry a little bit more quickly. Yeah. The, the time that we did have problems with the oils outside was um, um, this past where, where we did where I did this one, the paint out there. One of the days rained the whole day. So I set up a 10 by 10 um, thing. Four of us were painting under it. And it worked fine for a while. Paula was Paula was there under the tent. And um, it worked great until rips from the sew lines. And then the wind started coming and started splattering and everything. Now oil and water don't mix. So it was causing a few problems there. But it's still, we still came out fine with our paint. And then I did discover too that when it's snowing, um, the the snow gets in your paint and it makes it crunchy, like there's <laughs> sand in it. <laughs> so, but other than that, oil is fine. No, I, I'm sitting here listening to you and watching, and I think the picture behind you is really beautiful. The sun setting there and reflecting on all those trees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really <laughs> Not something I would be doing. I didn't really. What happened? Um, I. I took a painting class one. I was afraid to take drawing because I didn't want to freshman year in college. And so the second semester, I thought, oh, they're going to want me to take drawing. I don't want to take drawing, so I'm not going to take an art class. My professor that I had, back then when you signed up, you had to go into a gym and you had to take cards <laughs> out, if you remember that. And, uh, and my prof the, the professor came running after me. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, you haven't signed up for any classes. You have to. I signed up for the drawing class and they didn't do it. Sorry, <laughs> they didn't have them. Oh. <laughs> it was a small Christian college and they, they were in just short. started and 
Uh, we met at the park. Yes, we met at the park, okay. and I did pastels then. Okay. That time. Well, I didn't like it. I never did finish it. <laughs> <laughs> an idea of the time that required to do a, a painting like you saw on the beach or the date was there and that picture. How long does it how long do you take to do that? It it really varies. I struggle with certain aspects of it. Um, but they do take a good amount of time. Good time. So you have them set up in a room and you come back to them. Yes, I come do back to them work a little and then if it's not working today, if you go for a walk, and when it is working, you mm -hmm. do extensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I have a little section of our basement. We have a, some nice lights, and then you can leave everything down there without having to clean up, which is nice. Yeah. Okay. No, he wasn't there, but he started that group. Um, he does a lot. He, oh yeah, he's he's. But I think he just goes by himself. He just goes anywhere by himself, as far as I know. But I was looking for something, and I saw this group that he had started. He has since stopped being the facilitator of it. I don't think anybody took it over. So he's doing every neighbor. Yes. We have a question here in chat from an Ann Kahula. It looks like the end of her question got cut off, but I'm going to kind of interpret it. Um, do you have any goals or specific things that you would like to achieve as an artist that you haven't done yet? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to finish a plein air painting on the spot. I just kind of feel like that's the way it should be, although it's not always the case. And, and we I also wanna, have want to paint like her. <laughs> we also have a comment from uh, Bonnie Garrison. Mm -hmm. She says, "Thanks, Betty. So proud of you." Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Bonnie. I do. This one's not because I just finished it recently. But I will um, use a satin varnish on it. So there are, for those who aren't familiar with paints, um, some paints will dry, some colors will dry more matte than other colors. So you have this um, gloss and matte in the same painting. So I just really, I like getting it a little bit more smooth. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.